All right, this is kind of a continuation of a previous video. Uh, I thought I would go ahead and tell you the whole story of the time I met an MK Ultra trainer. So uh, I was a preacher at a pretty large church. A woman came to our church, uh, wanted to get involved in the church, um, but a weird thing happened. The bishop in charge kind of snubbed her and wouldn't let her get involved in the church, which is kind of uncharacteristic for him. So I asked him about it. He was pretty cryptic about why, and he actually did tell me that it was because he felt like she had mental issues and he couldn't go into it. So uh, I didn't think anything more of it. A couple weeks later, I was at a, a big seminar with a bunch of uh, clergy. It was um, open to anyone who paid the fee to get into it, but uh, it was primarily a clergy convention, uh, a series of seminars, multiple day thing. So like on day one, uh, I encountered this woman in the lobby. She came up to me and wanted to tell me why she was not part of our church and what had happened with her and the pastor. So I was curious and I gave her a listen. And the story that she told me was mind boggling. It was beyond belief and I could see totally why the pastor would think she was crazy. So um, I went ahead and gave her the time kind of out of morbid curiosity and, you know, at the end of this four hours I spent with this woman, I decided if she was crazy, she was the most special kind of crazy I'd ever seen. That her craziness was so detailed and in-depth that honestly it made me believe her story even though it was totally unbelievable. And since then, I have stayed away from the topic of MK Ultra because, uh, and even the Illuminati and a lot of this stuff I don't delve too deeply into uh, because it does sound so crazy. But let me just tell you, as best I can remember, the story this woman told me. So she claims to have been born in the Illuminati, from a Illuminati Bavarian family, who can trace their origins very all the way back to the beginning of the Bavaria version of the, the Illuminati, which is the ones that are supposed to be, you know, at the Grove and you know the, the supposed to be the the Bilderbergers and all of this. So. She claims that she had a relatively normal childhood, although she was raised mostly by other people because they were very wealthy, and that she had gone to, you know, uh, uh, you know, were they off to parochial school or whatever, not parochial school, but private school, and that she didn't live at home and didn't know her parents much until she was 13. When she was 13, she was taken, she says, to Rome where they walk through a series of catacombs under the city and hallways and passageways underground until they ended up in an Illuminati uh, room, uh, like a, a, a cathedral or, a, or a, a satanic church. And she claims that the Illuminati are Satanists, that this is all about Satanism. And uh, what she described was a big giant round area with 13 thrones encircling this area. and. The 13th throne was empty. The 12th throne is where the head Illuminati members sat. And the previous 11 thrones were occupied by the dead bodies of previous heads of the Illuminati. So he was, in her telling, she said that we were at the end of time and that, uh, that this was the final, this, this Illuminati was in charge now, head Illuminati guy, whatever, the head guy, I can't remember what she called him. Um, the master, she called him the master, that he was the last one before the final one who would become the Antichrist. He was going to sit in the empty 13th throne. So in this circle, she said, was a pentagram and candles, and she was laid on a ceremonial uh, altar at the center of this. And then while everyone watched, this large group, including her family, she was um, raped by this, well, she gave herself willingly to this 12th um, master who uh, impregnated her with her first child in that ceremony where she lost her virginity and was impregnated. Um, she said that she had just started her period a couple, a few months earlier and that that's why they took her there and that when they took her there she was fertile. So she was inseminated by this guy in this ceremony and that her son was very special because she was the son of the master or he was the son of the master, rather. And she was chosen because she was of a pure bloodline that went back to royalty in Bavaria. So, flash forward, she's given an arranged marriage uh, to a, a slightly older man. I think um, she was 14, 
13 or 14 when they got married. And uh, I don't believe they were married in the States. They were married in another country. I think it may be Germany. Um, at any rate, her and her husband were trained and had a job in the Illuminati, and they were MK Ultra trainers. And their life was very interesting that they would, um, they would just be asleep and living this normal life, and they would get a phone call. And this phone call would give them their trigger word because they'd been brainwashed and their personalities had been split. So during the rest of the time, this lady thought she was just a housewife, you know, just a soccer mom. And her husband was just a guy that, you know, uh, worked at the police force. He was a cop. And um, she said that they would get this call in the middle of the night and be given a code word where, where they would snap out of this false persona and become the MK Ultra Illuminati trainers that they both were. They would wake their kids up because their kids were also in this torture program becoming MK Ultra slaves. And they would go to an undisclosed location in a rural environment underneath these giant tents, these giant white like FEMA tents. And um, I asked her if this was the United States government and she said, no, this is above the United States government. This is." This is the people that all the governments uh, report to. And I struggled to understand it 11 years ago. And so anyway, she says um, that they would then engage in torturing other candidates and that they themselves didn't torture their own children, other people did it. But they would torture children and young adults and uh, they would use this torture to split their personalities and be able then to be like them. So a code word would snap them out of their fake life and back into the reality of who they were. And that these people, uh, some of them were there against their will, were, were literally kidnapped and done this to on a regular basis. Um, so at first she was in charge of torturing and it was her job to torture other people. And I, I tried to probe her heart about how that made her feel. and. I could see that at one time she had no conscience, but at some point she grew one. So, you know, it, was, it bothered her now, but she admitted that it was her job then and didn't bother her a bit, that it was part of what the big picture was. So they would train these people, and when they got them to where they could turn them on and off like that, then they would start giving them weapons training, martial arts training, firearms training, and eventually she was promoted out of torture into firearms training, and she claimed to be an expert firearms, uh, uh, firearms expert. And being a gun guy myself, I queried her during those four hours, and I believe that she was very well knowledgeable, um, even more knowledgeable than I am about military-grade weapons. She knew a lot about automatic weapons and the various uh, forms they come in. So, <clears throat> at any rate, being a curious guy and being a little scared, but from her from her story, you know, I went straight to, okay, so what is the end game? What, why are you training all these people? What do you intend to do with them? And she, in no uncertain terms, said, Oh, they're going to overthrow every government on earth and create a one world government and take over. We've been planning it for hundreds of years. And uh, it took a long time to build the infrastructure. And we've been training around the clock. Now, keep in mind, this is 11 years ago. She said, We've been training around the clock. She said, We may only train once or twice a month, but there's somebody training somewhere every night. And that there are thousands and thousands and thousands of MK Ultra uh, mind control slaves who are trained assassins who live amongst ordinary people and are, uh, in fact, completely unaware most of the time of who they really are until they're woken up. And uh, that the way I said, well, how do they how are they going to roll this out? You know, the American people aren't going to stand for this. What about, you know, the National Guard and the veterans? And she said, they have no idea what's coming for them. When we do this, it's going to happen so fast. And I said, well, tell me how it goes. And she said, okay, here's the plan. The plan is there will be some event or series of events that will create so much chaos in the world, so much uh, that even the police, I said, what about the police? You know, she said, the police uh, will stay home. She said, it will be so bad that the police will say, I did not sign up for this and they won't go. And the ones that do go will easily be taken out by our army. And I said, well, what's going to happen? I mean, are you going to be wearing American uniforms? Is this American military? And she goes, no. She says, in the middle of this chaos, in the middle of the um, fog of war, when everyone thinks everything's gone completely haywire, then suddenly you'll see these forces just emerge, all dressed in black, all dressed in SWAT gear. She said, they will uh, be driving you know, uh, all look-alike black SUVs, and they will look and sound and act very official. 
and they will just simply claim that they are now in charge and everyone should do as they say. They will claim that they are part of a new government that has been uh, established for the purpose of dealing with the said situation and that the police would either work with them or be quickly eliminated if they didn't and that the military is not going to get involved because they follow orders and no one's going to give them an order to get involved that that order will never come and that they will simply transfer their allegiance from the United States Army to the new world government that will emerge and she made it sound like it could literally happen overnight but I think I gathered from it that it was a process that would accumulate with them taking charge at some point just physically showing up as the guys with the guns and the cars and the official looking uniforms and uh, the whole thing was the creepiest encounter I ever had and there's the whole story and uh, I wish I could say it was the creepiest but it's in the top three creepy stories I could tell you about this strange life I've lived so uh, we're gonna find out more about this shooter and see if he was in fact MK Ultra.